everybody, welcome to a new episode of First Plate. Uh, this is a part of my YouTube channel where I give my first impressions of a board game or a card game or whatever. And this time we are going on a first date for First Plate with Yazult Moet en Geven en Nemen, which will be released in English by Stronghold Games under the name of Dividais and which is also known in Germany as Man muss auch gönnen können. Uh, this, uh, there it is by Schmidtspieler in Belgium and the Netherlands is by uh, 999 Games. It is designed by Ulrich, Ulrich Blum and Jens Merkel and it is for ages 8 and up, plays in about 30 minutes, 1 to 4 players so you can play this solo. Now this is a roll and write, they are quite popular, especially this series here by Schmidtspieler, they have Ganshon Clever and Encore for example. So let's go to the table, see a short overview, and then I will talk about my first date, my first plate of Dividais. And this is the game for you. So a few things that might stand out. We have dice, of course, because this is a roll and ride game. We have a bunch of these cards which you can ride on. The game comes with these uh, markers here. You can erase when you're after you ride on these cards. So that's pretty cool. And uh, well, this is for the players. Each player gets one of these. If you have the number one, you're starting player. The market here is where you can buy new cards because every player starts with three cards in their tableau. They get a choice out of four of them and they can place them however they want, but they have to be adjacent to at least one other card. And you can only have a maximum grid of three by three, which is also one of the ways to uh, start the end game. That's when a player has their ninth card in their 3x3 grid. Now, how this game works is you have two types of cards. You have scoring cards and you have bonus cards. Scoring cards you will score at the end of the game if you manage to complete them, which means you have to fill every part of the card with a number or cross off every part in order to cross this off in order to score points the way the card scores. And there are different types of cards that score in a different way. You have bonus cards, they will help you during the game. As soon as you finish one of these cards, for example this one, if I manage to fill in these four uh, squares, then this card has been completed and now I can three times can change a die plus one or minus one. So that will help you during the game. So the game is very simple, but there is one little special thing about this. If you are starting player, you will roll all five dice. Now you can, if you want, take any of these dice and reserve them and you put them there for them, and you can re-roll up to twice. Now, when you re-roll, the other players have a choice of one of the re-rolled dice. So the other players can now choose any one of the these three dice in the, to put on their own cards in their tableau. So example, I do this and maybe I stop now. But if I would have rerolled this one, for example, now, then the other players would have choice to get a green one. Now it's my turn. So I have a couple of choices now. I could either buy a card and to buy a card, you have the market here, you need three or four of the same result dies. In this case, I rolled four trees, so I could buy any of these cards. If I do, I just take the card and I place it somewhere in my tableau. Again, it cannot be more than a three by three grid. I can also choose to write in numbers that I rolled, use the dice themselves. But there's a very important thing here. In order to use more than two dice, I have to be able to complete one of these cards. So, for example, I have a bunch of trees, so I could be start to I could start working on this card, but it needs seven of uh, numbers. I only have five dice, so I cannot complete this card in this turn. So I'm not allowed to use all these trees to fill in this on these cards, because you have to finish a card in order to use them, or you take a chance, which means you can write two numbers of your roll dice in your cards. So how do you score those cards? How do you complete them? Well, that's where the part of the passive player comes in. So as I already mentioned, you, when you, it's not your turn, 
and the other player, the star player, the active player, rerolls uh, re dice, you choose one die of them to write in your own thing. So during the other player's turn, you are going to be able to cross off squares on your cards and hopefully in your turn you're able to finish one of them. If you do, they will score you points at the end of the game or they will help you mitigate the dice roll. You keep on doing this until a player has their ninth card, then you finish that round and play one more round so that everybody had the same number of, of uh, turns and then you tally up the points of the scoring cards. Player with the most points is the winner. There you go. That's a very short summary of this game. Now, what do I think of it? First of all, the rulebook is okay. It just works. It uh, it tells you what to do, so it serves its purpose. The game itself. Let's go to the gameplay, right? That's the most important thing. Well, the components, they're pretty cool. So uh, let's start about the components first. These cards, you can write on these, so that's pretty neat. I didn't show it on the video, but it, it works perfectly. You can write on them and you can uh, use a piece of paper or whatever and it comes up, up pretty fast and easy. So that's pretty cool. It also looks like this game is a love child between silver and gold, which has also these erasable cards, which is pretty cool. And Ganshan cover are pretty clever um, because, well, the goal of the game feels a little bit the same. So this like, these are mixed together in its own game, which is pretty cool. At least the ID is pretty cool. Now for the game itself. So I like the idea that you're building your own uh, little tableau of cards and trying to find synergies and trying to score points that way. And you have to find a balance between these bonus cards in order to mitigate these dice rolls and scoring cards because those you need to score points and to win the game of course. Uh, and it works and up until one thing. So what I had, and we had it in our two player game, which wasn't that bad at that time, but we also had it, uh, and I had it personally in our four player game. So as I said, when it's your turn, you are not allowed to fill in a bunch of dice if you cannot complete your card. So what happens if, is if you manage, if you have three cards and you manage to complete them, and you, in your turn, you don't roll three or four of the same die, so you cannot buy new cards. You have nothing that you can do during your turn. Okay, uh, you're t and you try to roll three or four of the same because you need that extra card because you cannot do anything. In the meantime, the other players, they are, of course, uh, having a big, big profit of your rerolls, looking for those three or four of the kind. Also, if it doesn't work out and you don't roll dice or you don't roll a result that allows you to get more cards, you will be out of the game for a complete round in which the other players are still enjoying each other's rerolls, but you cannot do anything. And when it's back to you, if you fail to roll three or four of a kind again, which happened to me, then you're out of the round for out of the game for two rounds, that's eight turns, and you are completely screwed, if I can call it that way. And it's a little bit sad that it doesn't have any way of, um, well, of avoiding that situation. Because, okay, you can, you know that you need more cars, because you know that your cars can get filled up, which is a good thing, but you need options during to do during other players' turn. That's where you get the profit from, from their rerolls. But if it was not, if for me, it wasn't a choice to not have more cards. I never rolled three or four of a kind, and then my cards got filled up, and I didn't roll three or four of a kind, so I couldn't buy new cards, so I was stuck, and the game was lost after I filled in my three first cards and then it became a frustrating game. So I kind of wished that they had made a rule somewhere, I don't know what rule or how, to avoid this situation, but this was pretty annoying. Now, besides that, I really like the idea of this game, and there are some pretty neat things. 
Maybe I would have liked to have so a couple of more uh, options in the bonus cards that they do more things. You have one that allows you to buy a card at one uh, less die. You have one that changes the die uh, by one that you can use a color for another color. So they have a few options there. They have a few different uh, options to score your cards. You have to have completed rows or columns or adjacent cards and all that stuff or certain colors. So that's pretty cool and that works perfectly fine. There's just only this one thing that can happen and happen to us in a two player game with less of a sour taste, but especially in a four player game, it was terrible for me. Anyway, so anyhow, how did this date went uh, go in the end? Uh, so I have a scale from worst date ever to love at first sight. And I think I must be honest, the idea is cool. And um, uh, I think I'm going to go for, uh, let's do this again, but it's a low one. Uh, it's almost a let's just be friends. I want to give this another chance and see if it's a very often recurring problem if it is then this will be let's just be friends and I probably get rid of my copy so that's uh, was my first impression my first plate of divi dice or whatever it's called in your language thank you for watching this I hope you liked it if you have played this game let me know in the comments below what you thought of this one and uh, thanks for watching see you all next time see you soon bye bye